Hello. We want to look at the process and methods of decision making in groups. Decisions are important in any group and therefore the process that is followed when, when they are being made equally becomes important. But even more important is the fact that certain decisions might require certain methods to be arrived at. That is why a discussion on the process of decision making as well as the methods that are used in making such decisions become important as far as uh, group issues are concerned. Because from time to time, the group leadership or the group as a whole might be called upon to make important decisions about certain things that are happening in the group or among the clients that it serves or other stakeholders that it deals with. So I want us all to pay attention to this discussion and invite students who may not have who may not have understood everything clearly to note them down and then raise them at appropriate time. Let us begin by having some preliminary discussion about this topic. And I wish to observe that decision making involves choosing a course of action after careful considerations. A decision can be understood as any course of action which is consciously chosen from among set alternatives to achieve a desired result. In other words, it is the understanding that achieving a given result or pursuit of a given issue might require different ways of doing it. And these are what we call alternatives. Now, some of the alternatives could be good, others may not be appropriate for that particular decision to be made. And therefore, uh, a, 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 a conscious calculation and consideration of the best alternative to be used to pursue something needs to be done. And that is what we mean by decision. Decision making is an important undertaking for groups since success or failure of a group depends upon the quality of decisions made. In other words, it is important for groups to come up with quality decisions because it is only quality decisions that can drive them towards a success. Decision making is a type of participatory process in which members act collectively, analyze an issue or a problem, generate and evaluate alternative courses of action, and then select from among the alternatives a solution or solutions to the problem that has been identified. So that when you talk about decision making, it is basically a process. And this process is participatory. Participatory meaning that members of the group are involved. It's not a one-man decision, but it's a group decision. Different opinions, different shades of arguments are brought on the table. And then from there, uh, one decision that is considered as being the best path to pursue is normally arrived at. Let's now look at the processes that are involved in decision making. The first stage of decision making is called the planning stage. And at the planning stage, the group decides on the criteria of evaluating the success of its decision. And this is done in two phases. Phase one, we, a decision is made on the type of decision making tools to be used. And then step two, a decision is also made on the type of indicators to be used to evaluate the success of group decisions. Some of the decision making tools 
include meetings, brainstorming sessions, among others. Uh, when you talk of meetings, simply means members coming together to discuss an issue. Brainstorming might mean a selection of a few people uh, with certain insight or expert, expert opinion about something, then they sit down and discuss. And from that discussion, the direction to be taken might be decided. Again, the criteria that is developed to assess the success of any decisions made should reflect the goals, the values, and objectives of the groups, as well as the stakeholders. In other words, if we describe a group as successful, it simply means that it, it is helping the group to fulfill its goals, its values, and also the objectives of various people that are directly or indirectly uh, uh, are affiliated to the group. So success is an all-encompassing uh, 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 thing that looks at whether the goals, the values, and the objectives of the groups and the aspirations of stakeholders is being achieved or not. So planning becomes uh, quite important. We have agreed here, or we have seen here that when you talk about planning the meeting, the focus is on two broader areas. One, we decide on the type of decision-making tools to be used. And then the second one, we come up with indicators of the success of the decisions that have been made. The second process in the decision-making is what we call determining alternatives. The stage of determining alternatives means that the group or the person facilitating the, 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 the meeting can help group members to generate and select several alternatives to the decisions. When you talk about alternatives, they can range between five to nine or less. Uh, these alternatives are what are considered as the pathways to solving the problem or the issue that has been identified. So we are saying that when we are determining alternatives, first we generate a given number of alternatives, say five to nine, and then each of these alternatives is discussed in detail. The, the pros and cons of each is looked into, and then they are eliminated or chosen based on the strength of, or based on their strength or weaknesses. And the group may also make reference to previous decisions on issues that bear similarities with previous ones. Indeed, if a decision is to be made and on an issue that has occurred in the organization before, there is nothing wrong for group leadership to look into the records and establish how previous issues were resolved. And if they were resolved success successfully and the circumstances still remain, then nothing bars the group leadership and its members from adopting the previous solutions to a problem in addressing the problem that the group, the group is currently facing. Uh, this is necessary because the purpose for which records are kept in organizations is to see how well they can be used to solve problems that are similar to the one that had been uh, that has affected the organization before. And this step is important because it reduces the number of decisions and keeps the group focused on the most uh, effective alternatives. We are saying that it is important for different alternatives to be brought to the table, discussed, and all aspects, weaknesses, strengths, costs, and all other things are looked into so that uh, an agreement is made on a group that or rather on, a, on an alternative that the group considers best fit their situation in terms of their goals, their aspirations, the issue at hand, the resources they have, among other things. Once different alternatives have been generated, they have been discussed, then the decision-making process moves to the next stage, 
and this is the stage that we call selection of best alternatives. This stage, group members subject each proposal or suggestion to the criteria set at the planning stage. This is the stage at which the best alternative from the solutions suggested earlier are selected and the suggestions or proposal solution that meets most criteria developed at the planning stage is selected ahead of the others. Just to emphasize one or more things, it is important that the alternative that is picked has uh, uh, not only the approval of members, but also meets certain criteria in terms of cost. In other words, how much is the group going to spend in sorting out a problem using the chosen alternative? Again, it is important for the group to look at whether the course of action being adopted best fits the objectives and values as well as goals. Otherwise, it is not right or morally correct to pick an alternative that appears to be against the objectives, values and goals of the organization. Again, it might also be important for groups to be convinced that the alternative they are picking can work, especially if it has worked elsewhere. If it indeed has worked elsewhere, then uh, it should be chosen on the basis of its strength, on the basis of the fact that it has worked elsewhere in solving a problem or an issue that is similar to the one that it is being proposed to address. So all these factors need to be considered when a given alternative uh, 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 is being chosen. The whole criteria here is that the best alternative picked or the course of action picked should be the one that the group considers as the best. And being best means it meets certain standards, certain criteria, and it has also been, it been proven as being successful in resolving a problem that is similar to the one that the group is currently uh, facing. The next stage of decision-making process is called the deployment. And at the deployment stage, groups bring their decisions into reality. And it involves determining the actions and tasks that follow the final decision. It also includes guiding requirements on how to organize the process. Deployment basically means that the given alternative has been picked and once it has been picked, the next thing is to use that alternative to solve the problem that the group had identified as requiring a decision. So deployment simply means the actions that follow the act, the implement, or, or rather the, the implementation stage of the decision making process. So for instance, if there's a problem of poverty in society and uh, the groups decided that one way of resolving or, 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 or solving poverty in society is providing financial grants to other groups such as the youth to engage in business activities, then the issue is that now at this stage, uh, grants, financial grants begin to be given, youths are brought together, trained, given grants, so that the implementation stage of the decision-making process now begins and then it allows to move and to see whether issues of poverty that the group envisaged could be sorted out by providing grants to groups or to individuals to help them uh, engage in income generating activities is actually working and is helping in solving the problem. So deployment simply means putting into action a decision that has been arrived at for purposes of solving the problem that was identified at the, at the, at the initial stage. Let's now discuss some of the methods that are used to make decisions in groups. 
One of the methods is called brainstorming. Brainstorming involves group members verbally suggesting ideas or alternatives, another alternative course of action. The situation at hand is described in as much detail as necessary so that group members have a complete understanding of the issue. The group leader or facilitator then elicits, rather solicits ideas from all members of the groups, which are then recorded uh, down. Once the ideas of members have been exhausted, members then begin the process of evaluating the utility of the different suggestions presented. So that when we talk of brainstorming, basically we mean an idea is brought to the table, members talk about it as much as they can verbally, they suggest various ways of how they think the problem can be solved, and then once that is done, the person who is facilitating the group or chairing the group discussion then asks members to note down the, the various courses of action they have suggested. Once that is done, then each suggestion that is given by a member is subjected to the discussion by the entire group membership. The pros and cons of each alternative is evaluated, it is discussed, and then based on their strength, some are accepted, again, based on their weaknesses, some are declined. This process will continue until members narrow down to a range of a few alternative course of action. Those that remain are now the ones that are considered as the best alternatives to address the problem at hand. We need to notice that uh, this method has certain disadvantages and one of them is that some members may shy away from contributing for fear of judgment or ridicule by other members. It is quite possible that indeed in any group setting, there are people who are open to discussions, but there are also others who may not be open to discussions. And in that process, they might not feel so much comfortable contributing to a discussion in the presence of other members. Otherwise, this can be an effective method if people freely and openly and frankly uh, discuss issues and then arrive at the best answer or the best alternative at the end of the day. The other method of decision making in groups is called dialectical method. And this method involves dividing the group into opposing sides, which then debates the advantages and disadvantages of a proposed solution or decision. It requires members to critically analyze the strengths and weaknesses of proposed solutions or decisions. The method is preferred where groups want to establish all possible ramifications of their decisions. When you talk of the dialectical method, it's like a debate, it's like a formal debate where you have opposers and proposers. So that those who are for a given route to take in resolving a problem, they take one side, and those who do not subscribe to that route again take the opposite side. Now each side tries at, as much as possible to provide evidence, data, and all information that they consider could support their stand on any given issue. Now based on the strengths or weaknesses of the group 
and the arguments are presented, then a decision is now taken by the entire group with regard to what needs to be done to resolve a problem that has been identified. So this type of method is a back and forth method where one side vividly explains and attempts to convince members why they have taken a given position and then the other side does the same. Then the group that wins the discussion, the debate, their views is adopted. If they are too, if they are persuasive enough and convinces the entire group that the methods that are being used to resolve or solve a problem that has been identified is the best method, considering all other factors, then the idea can be brought on board. Otherwise, the idea would be rejected on lack of uh, critical information that group members feel is essential in terms of guiding them in understanding suitability or otherwise of the decision that they want made regarding the best route to address the problem at, at, at. The other method of group decision making is called the nominal group technique. This involves group members generating and submitting their ideas in a written form, followed by a step of discussion and clarification, and then finally a vote is taken. Each group member is then invited to provide one item from their list until all ideas are or alternatives have been publicly recorded. Once all proposals are listed publicly, the group engages in a discussion of the listed alternatives, which ends in some form of ranking or rating in order of preference. And this technique can be beneficial as it allows all members of the group to have their say without the pressure of speaking in front of others. So when you talk about nominal group technique, basically what we mean is that an individual generates ideas at his own level, and then these ideas, once they have been written down by individuals, they are now shared to the group, uh, 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 to the group leadership. Once the group leadership has received all the contributions in writing from various members of the group, then the group leadership or the group leaders invite uh, the contributors of these ideas, and then they are now discussed. Once they have been discussed, they are now listed in form of priority or in form of preference, with the first or the best route considered being ranked number one, followed by number two, followed by number three, uh, that way. So that once that system has been followed, then one item that the group considers as the most efficient and effective means of addressing the problem at hand is then adopted and then deployed. Now, this type of uh, decision-making method can be beneficial because it allows all members of the group to have their say without the pressure of speaking in front of others. Like I noted earlier on, sometimes there are members who may be shy standing in front of others and then presenting their ideas and therefore when they uh, when they are left on their own at their own level uh, to present their ideas in writing then sometimes they have they find it easier or they find it more comfortable to do so other than having to be prepared to speak before other members of the group The other method of decision making is called the Delphi technique. It's a group decision making method that is used when group members are in different physical locations. The method entails each group member 
being invited to independently provide ideas, input, or solutions to the issues at hand. The ideas or suggestions may be provided online, by mail, or by electronic uh, uh, boards. After each stage in the process, other group members ask questions and alternatives are ranked or rated according to some criteria. After indefinite number of surrounds, the group eventually arrives at a consensus decision on the best course of action. So when we talk of Delphi technique, we basically mean that method that we use when members of the group are not at physically uh, physical proximity. They are geographically dispersed. And in that case, therefore, people are invited to make their presentations in writing and then forward them to a central place. Once that is done, each member is presented with the ideas that have been proposed by other members, placed on their desk, and then they independently comment on them, agree on what they can agree with, and then uh, also offer the, their disagreement on issues that they think are not viable. Again, that one, the feedback is taken back to the owner who again corrects uh, his list, then comes up with another version. So that round will continue until the matter is discussed or the matter is critically evaluated by each member until a given proposal is arrived at, a consensus arrived at. Now, the consensus, the issues of the matter, uh, the decision that is now arrived at by majority of people through that consensus is now what is eventually adopted as the best course of action to address the problem at hand.